Hi, my name is Sean, and this is my first ASMR video. I thought I would do something a little bit different than the other ones I've seen on YouTube, um, and I'm going to uh, show you how to make chain mail. This is going to be a uh, multi-part series, and let's go ahead and get started. You'll basically need some wire. I'm using 12 gauge wire. You can pick it up at Home Depot or at Lowe's. It's fairly cheap. You're going to want to get a pretty large coil of it. Use this to make the rings that you construct your chain mail out of. Actually spinning the ring, spinning the wire into coils, I will cover in another video, but let me show you one that's already spun up. You have a coil like this. And from that coil, you're going to cut the rings that you'll be using to weave the chain mail. So, to start out, I'm going to show you how to cut the rings. You're going to need, in addition to the coil, a pair of tin snips. Now, you can see where that little ridge is. That's where you're going to cut at. Right along there, all the way down. And I'm going to snip them right into this box. So, we're just going to cut all the way down. And I'm not going to cut this whole coil, I'm just going to do a few so that you can see how it's done. Now if you've looked online, a chain mail for sale, you probably notice that it's extremely expensive. Part of the reason is because the amount of work that goes into it and the time it takes to construct. The actual process of making it is fairly simple and straightforward and extremely cheap. You just gotta have a lot of patience and a lot of time. That should be enough rings for now to get us started. And if you cut a bunch of them, you'll end up with a bunch of rings. Just to give you an idea, let me show you a uh, larger sheet of chain mail that's already been constructed. This is what you'll be left with. And you do an ever expanding sheet depending on what you want to make. This is going to eventually become a full size chainmail shirt called a hauberk. And it's pretty heavy. This one weighs, just this little sheet probably weighs a good 10 15 pounds. And this is a few weeks worth of work right here. So, once you have your rings, they're going to be slightly open, if you can see, from cutting them. Now what you're going to want to do to start out is take a couple pairs of needle nose pliers, grip either side of the ring, and just close it. So now you're left with a closed ring. You want to start out with probably about 30 this is a good number to start out with. Then you're going to thread them onto this guy right up here. Just a steel mandrel. I got it held in a vice grip and propped on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our closed rings 
we're going to slide them on the end of the mandrel, like so. And I'll be starting out with 30. That's four. And it goes without saying that you're going to want a mandrel that's a little smaller in diameter than your rings, so they'll fit and be able to move easily. Because you're going to want a lot of mobility out of them because you're going to be moving your project around on the mandrel quite a bit while you're doing the actual weaving. Got them all in the mandrel here. Nice and easy. Now, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to start the actual weave. So you're going to take some of your rings, and like I said before, two pairs of needleless pliers. Smaller, the better, I think. They're easier to work with. Um, these are a little bit thinner. And then I have a little bit wider flat pair. And what I'm going to do is spread these out a little bit. And I'm going to attach my first ring. First thing I want to do is open it up fairly wide. I like that and I'm going to thread it through the first two rings on here, like so. And then, I'm going to move this out of the way, I'm going to grab it with the needle nose pliers and I'm going to close the ring. Like that. So now I have one ring connected to the two top ones. So now I'm going to do my next ring. And the way that's going to work after I open it up that's going to go through the third ring on the top and through that bottom ring that we just put on there. And then I'm going to close it. Just like that.
actually missed a part there. Which is okay, and this is going to happen while you're weaving. Mistakes are very, very easy to fix. You just open your ring back up, and you re-thread it. Right through the top ring here. See, there. We have the two bottom rings connected. They're not connected to each other, but they're connected to the top rings there. So now we're going to do our next one across. It's going to go this one and the next top one next to it and then we're going to close it and we're going to continue on to the next one open the ring Thread it through. And close it. And we're going to keep going. And this is one of the really tedious parts of making chain mail. Starting out, weaving the top of the sheet. Once you have the top of the sheet completely in place, it goes a lot faster. My mic is picking up these sounds. I'm not working with the best mic, but hopefully that will change in future videos. Right now, I'm just using an iPhone to film this. because that's really easy to fit onto the workbench. And if you were to see the whole workbench, you would understand why space is an issue. It's a bit of a mess. a third of the way done with the top piece.
lose the ring. Or attempt to. There we go. Open the ring, thread it through the top two. run out of rings, so i grab some more. closed. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. There we go. And like I said before, chainmail is a relatively uh, cheap project and you can make all kinds of cool things from it. Obviously you can go with the traditional chainmail armor, but you can also make things such as bracelets, purses, pretty much anything you can think of. I've even seen chainmail ties. accessory for the uh, Viking metal enthusiast that has everything. Now using this 12 gauge wire with a proper weave, your resulting chain mail, if you decide to do an actual suit of armor, will stop a blow from a sword or a hammer unless of course it has a piercing spike on it in which case you would want a uh, much tighter weave for the chain mail which is actually uh, what's called an 8 in 1 weave also referred to as king's mail because generally only people with a lot of money wore it because it's incredibly uh, time and labor intensive and not really all that practical. Then there's a uh, six in one weave, which is just a little bit looser weave than the king's mail. Also, very time intensive, not terribly practical. 
and then there's the uh, four in one weave, which is what we're doing. Which is what most standard English chain mail utilized. There are other weaves, such as ones they used in the uh, chain mail for the Japanese samurais, which are uh, much more intricate and well beyond the scope of this video tutorial. But the 4-in-1 weave is a good all-purpose chain mail. You saw the sheet that I held up earlier. Pretty strong. And we're almost done here. Just a few more. What's fun is I actually live with a blacksmith, and he's the one who taught me how to make this. And this is something I do in my spare time to relax. And I'll most likely be uploading some videos later on because I'm going to be learning how to forge. So I'll be sure to bring the camera with me and give you guys a lesson in forging as well. And close the ring. Thread it through. And close the ring. So we now have our top line for the weave. Make it down there. Okay. Just close it up, make sure everything's tight. Sure, we didn't miss any. No, I do believe we got them all. Very nice. All right, let's spread her back out a little bit. And this is why you need a mandrel that's a good bit uh, smaller in diameter than the rings, so that you can move it around quite easily. It makes it a lot easier for weaving. Let me. Slide everything down this way a little bit. Get it in the camera so that you can see what I'm doing here. Alright. Now we're going to try to kind of get these mostly in even width across. Spread out. So it makes it a lot easier to weave. So, for the second line, you're going to take your ring. You're going to open it up just like before and 
And now, to weave it through, we're going to weave it through one, two. The first two on the bottom here. Just like that. And then we're going to close it. next one, we weave the first one through these first two rings, then the next one goes through the second and third ring. It's easier if you kind of pinch them together, and right where they open up, weave it right through there. Now mind you, it's not going to attach to the first ring on here. It's completely independent of that first ring. It's going through rings two and three. So the first one goes through rings one and two. The second one goes through rings two and three. The third one goes through rings three and four. The next one goes through rings four and five and so forth all the way down. And as you'll see, once we get the second row done, it'll actually start to take shape. Now there are other methods you don't have to go across, you can actually go down as far as you want to go and then move it across. I find that way a little bit more difficult. I think it's easy to just work in horizontal rows. But you can do whatever is easier for you. Once you've got the weave down, you can pretty much do it any way you want, whatever you're most comfortable with. This just happens to be what I'm most comfortable with and what I think is probably the easiest for a beginner doing this. And actually by the time we're finished this row, you would have enough for a uh, bracelet right there for somebody with a smaller wrist. If you're doing the smaller projects, they can actually be accomplished quite quickly. And we're going to close the ring. Like so. And a furry friend has decided to join us. And abruptly left. see her on camera, but we've got a giant king corso running around here, which if you haven't seen one before is an Italian Mastiff. Quite a large dog. And if you didn't know her, it would probably be quite intimidating, but she's a big baby. Wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, she'll hurt flies, but wouldn't hurt a human. She actually sits out on the porch and snaps at flies. It's quite amusing to watch. And there we go. And I made another mistake. Which is good because I can show you how to fix it. I skipped a ring. I'm just going to take this guy off, 
by opening it back up. Take her out and put her where she's supposed to go, which is right there. Incidentally, this is my first ASMR video, so I don't quite have my setup yet, and I'm not particularly used to being on camera, especially not talking on camera, so please bear with me, and please be kind in the comments. Constructive criticism is always appreciated. Yeah. Looks like that ring doesn't want to come back together, so we're just going to toss that and pick up the pliers I just dropped. So let's open up a new ring and go ahead and try that one. The other one was apparently a dud. And you will occasionally get rings that don't want to close properly or are a little bit bent up. If you do, just toss them. It's not worth trying to use them because it can actually screw up the weave of your chainmail. Now in my workshop, I have a ring I need to toss. I just toss it onto the floor because I've got an industrial magnet on a string that I just move around the floor and it picks up all the rings that I haphazardly threw all over the place. For most people, just have a little bucket or something like this you can toss the waste rings into. Because you're going to end up getting some messed up when you're snipping them off the coil, too. Generally, at the end of every uh, several hour work span, I've got at least a hundred waste rings. Which, as cheap as they are, is not a big deal. When you're first starting to snip your own rings, you're probably going to get a lot of messed up ones before you uh, get it down. I know I did. And we're just moving our way across. And she's starting to take shape. and keep going. So, just now is a good time to give you a little bit of background about me. I'm 35 years old. I'm a classically trained chef. And I live in New Jersey. Cue the Jersey jokes. I first discovered that I had ASMR when I was a young child, probably about eight years old. And my first experience with it was with a haircut. And until recently, I never knew what it was. Thought I was the only one, thought I was weird. But it was always a great way for me to relax. And obviously because I can't go have constant haircuts, 
I would search for other noises that would trigger me because I'm triggered primarily by sounds. Scratching sounds, clinking sounds, sometimes water sounds. Not so much the whispering, but I used to watch a lot of cooking shows because the cooking sounds, like the sound of a whisk in a metal bowl, chopping, everything, would work for me. Then I discovered the videos on YouTube. I'll give it a try, making my own. So, I guess I had feedback and constructive, constructive criticism is always appreciated because I would like to improve these videos as I do them, make better and better videos for you guys. And, of course, if you have um, any requests of anything you'd like me to do, feel free to. Uh, Leave that in the comments, and I'll try to get to as many requests as I can, as quickly as I can. I do work uh, a lot of hectic hours in the restaurant that I work in, often 12, 14, 16 hour shifts, but I'll try to do as many of these videos as I can on my downtime. If there's anything you'd like to say, feel free to leave my request. And of course, subscribing to my channel and liking my videos will help out greatly and facilitate me being able to constantly make more videos. being a bugger. There we go. Just thought I had to toss that one. Open it up. Thread it through. Here. Luckily, I've got a good bunch made already. And if we end up needing more, I've got you can see plenty of coils. Already spun, we can cut rings from. But I think we should be good because we're almost done. With this line, I think after this line, that's where we're going to stop for this part. Let's finish this up real quick, and I'll take it off the mandrel and uh, show you how it looks and how it moves. Because of the way it sits off the mandrel quite a bit different than how it sits on the mandrel. Off the mandrel it'll kind of contract. And that's exactly what you want it to do. If it doesn't, then you need to take a look at your weave. And look for
for any errors or missed rings. Right, that is the beauty of doing this. Even if you mess up a whole section of it, just take it right out, redo it. It's very forgiving. Last one right here. I really hope my mic is picking up a lot of these sounds for you guys. If not, I'll be investing in a better mic. And hopefully soon a better recording device. Alright. Let's take it off the mandrel and see how he did. It's not going to slide right off because the steel bites into the mandrel, so you got to kind of ease it off. sufficient to make a bracelet for most people. And we do that in a relatively short amount of time. So with that, I'm going to conclude this part. We'll pick back up and we'll do a few more rows and possibly show you how to spin some coils. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you like, give me a like, subscribe to my channel, and there will be more videos forthcoming.